Welcome back to the Roar Podcast Sports Edition. I am Brayton Bowen. And I'm Toby Meyer. And uh, today we're going to do a little special NCAA college basketball episode because it is uh, March 7th on this recording in the uh, Big Ten tournament. Um, Madness is about to begin. Yeah, baby. Big Ten um, Big Ten tournament starts this Wednesday, I believe, is the first games. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Wednesday and then Thursday are the bigger teams like IU play on Thursday. And then Friday, yeah. the four teams that got the double bye for the Big Ten. Uh, we'll play Friday, and also not just the Big Ten. The SEC, I believe, is going to be this week. I think, yeah, all of them are. The big one, the big ones. Yeah, the big ones are this week because Selection Sunday is this Sunday. Yes, sir. So uh, that's going to be real, real interesting because there's a lot of teams that are. Toby's going to talk about a few teams that have already punched their tickets to the dance, and you know, there's some teams that I've never heard of before that Toby's going to talk about, like Longwood. I've never heard of Longwood in my life, to be honest with you, but that's just besides the point. Toby and I are big uh, Big Ten fans, so we're going to be talking a lot about the Big, the big Ten, talking about a couple of the composite rankings that are put out, such as the net and the Ken Palm rankings. So we're going to get right into that. So, Toby, you want to open, open this up with some automatic bids already? Yeah, let's get the tickets punched. So Loyola Chicago, that's a uh, Missouri Valley team, more of a more of a popular. They, I feel like they typically right now, they're Sister winning Jean, Missouri man. Valley. Sister Jean, as long as she's there, Did she die, they though? win. Did she die? I, I think know. she died, and that's why. That's why they say it's it for Sister Jean. I believe so. Right, Toby had to fact check that real let's quick. See. I, I did see a video of the Loyola coach saying, "Like this is for you, Sister Jean." Um, it appears. Yes, she's still alive. Really? As or maybe of, she's just, isn't she like 100 and something? She's 102, I believe. Oh, my goodness. As of 2020, she was living at the Flair, a luxury senior living residence downtown Chicago. So she's living the high life. Yeah, dude. Didn't she, she watch them go to the Final Four? <laughs> she couple, sure did. Was she's, it like, two years ago? She was there. Like and they made the Sweet 16. 2018. They right. made the Sweet 16 a couple years ago. Yeah, they did. But they also fired that coach. They have a new coach. They do, and now they're they won the Missouri Valley twenty seven and six or twenty six and seven. That's beat, a pretty good record for a mid major. Yeah, beat Drake by six. So anyway, they're in. Pretty much everybody knows that name. Um, Murray State. They won the OBC, the Ohio Valley Conference. Which that they're they're a little bit of a bigger name. Bigger, bigger name. John Morant went to Murray State, so that's uh, that's how they're in that. They're actually ranked. They're twenty second. Huh. AP top 25. Well, they also probably don't have that good of a schedule. Uh, yeah, probably not. No offense to the OVC, but let's be honest. Yeah. Um, Moorhead State, they beat them by four to win the OVC, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like I like the fun of the March. Like you get you get a Murray State really can mix things up. Yeah, like you remember UConn, VCU. Yeah. We've had a couple big big teams. Florida Gulf well, Coast. not big teams. Yeah, Florida Gulf Coast <laughs> and. Uh, a whole lot of upsets like North Texas, RIP. Yeah. I'm a Purdue fan. We'll talk about Purdue here in a minute. The mean Green. The Mean Green. Uh, there's another one. Mm, the Longwood Lancers. Anybody ever heard of them? Bet you haven't because we haven't. <laughs> yep. Longwood Lancers are in. They the are Big in. South punch them. In, baby. Their ticket's punched. Their ticket is punched because they beat Winthrop. The Winthrop. Winthrop made the tournament last year. Looks like Winthrop ain't going to be in it this year. Yeah. Um, Winthrop got absolutely smashed, honestly, 21 By, by the Longwood Lancers. Lancers are ready to, to do some damage in the tourney. All right, so uh, those are the couple automatic bids that have been, their tickets have been punched so far. So now we're going to talk about a, a, an interesting video that Toby sent me, I believe it was yesterday or maybe the day before, where this one person said, wasn't it all the final four teams of the past, whatever, I don't remember exactly how many years. 72 of the 76 final four teams in the past, you do the math. I mean, yes, yeah. the past seven, 74, 76, whatever that, divided by four, yada, yada, 20-something maybe, 18, 19, 20 maybe. Um, all of them had defenses inside the top 75. Yeah. And according to Ken Palm, which is a ba- uh, not baseball, college basketball side that has offense, defense, tempo, their luck, their strength of schedule, like – how well they are, their strength of schedule is for the offensive type of teams, defensive type teams, or non-conference type schedule. It's got all you want. Yeah. It's like a basketball genie's website. Yeah. And an interesting fact that I noticed, and Toby also brought this up to my attention, is that Purdue's defense is ranked 105th. That is awful. Mm-hmm. That is terrible. And according to that video Toby sent me, where the 72 of the 76 have a defense inside the top, 
top 75. I look at all the teams surrounding Purdue, and there's not a team until 26 ranked in the Ken Palm Ohio State is at 121st, but all the other teams surrounding Purdue and all the teams in the top 10, their defenses are inside the top 30 for the most part, and, and most definitely in the top 40. Yeah. So I think that's interesting. And I, As a Purdue fan, I would I think this is the best Purdue team that Purdue has had in a while talent-wise. And I think that – I honestly don't think that Purdue will make it that far, even though I would love for Purdue to make it far. But this special of a team, <clears throat> 105th-ranked defense isn't going to get you much. It's not. Um, you look at the Big Ten defensively, and Indiana – has the best defense in the Big Ten, and you do you rank that nationally as 20th. So if you're saying 72 of the last 76 Final Four teams have had a defense inside inside the top 70 or 75, and the best Big Ten defense is Indiana, who's on the bubble right now, and has the 20th best defense. I I think that's why the uh, the Big Ten doesn't win national titles. I, we haven't won a national the big we I say we the Big Ten has not won a national title. While well, Wisconsin, well, who, no, Duke won twenty fifteen. Yeah, Be no, yeah. Me, it's been let, at let least me. it's been at least ten years. So anyway, I, that's why the Big Ten doesn't get anywhere because Indiana's ranked twentieth in defense. That's the best in the Big Ten, and there's no ch- I I use just not. They're not a good enough team to make the final four. Let's be honest. Um, my goodness. Uh, it's been a while. It, it has been a long time. Maryland, but that's back when they were in the ACC. ACC. You've got to be kidding. Michigan in 1989. Is, so the, is that the Fab Five? No, yeah. Fab Five lost. They didn't. They didn't win. They lost to the uh, Indiana Hoosiers. Uh, yeah, I mean Baylor won last year. 2020 was COVID year. Virginia, Villanova, North Carolina, Villanova, yeah. Duke, all these powerhouses. Then you got the Connecticut. Uh, UConn, Kimba Walker. Cardiac a- Kimba. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Syracuse. Oh no, Michigan State won in two thousand. Okay. Okay. So it's been tw- twenty two years. Twenty two years. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that just shows you. I think that's defense. I think the Big Ten defenses are not. I just don't think they can stand the rigors of a tournament because you look at you look at these Big Twelve teams. You watch a Big Twelve basketball game, and it is specifically. I was watching the Kansas Baylor game. It was up and down the floor. There was. There was defense, but they just they put up it's a just shot. It's an offensive slugfest. Yeah, they miss. They run down the other end, put up a shot. Okay, inbound, run to the other end, lay in. I mean, it's just you, – you get into Big Ten and it's miss a shot, get a rebound, run down, defense is set, and you're into your offensive set. Versus the Big 12, it's like get down, find the open shooter, put it up. Yeah, and it's, it's like – that. That's what's going to get you through the tournament. You're playing all these games. You're you're playing like eight ga- – or four games in eight days, essentially. Yeah, you, you just got to have – Something it. like that. And the thing that I particularly wonder about Purdue is that their 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 offense is supposedly is ranked number one. It is ranked number one. They yeah, but number one offense have you watched game. Purdue in their past five games? It's <laughs> atrocious. Nobody can score. Yeah. Jaden Ivey has to scratch and claw for twenty. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, Jaden Ivey is going to be a lottery pick, and he's extremely athletic, and he could easily put up almost thirty points if he wanted to, and if he's on his game. Yeah. But it's been a little weird with recently, and I'm. As a Purdue fan, I'm genuinely concerned Purdue's going to lose in the second round or maybe even the, in the first round to the Longwood Lancers. Yeah, the Lancers, baby. Look out. Um, Purdue is a one point, they have a one point advantage over Gonzaga for the top offense in the country, but Gonzaga has a sixth ranked defense. That's by far way better. Balances to the top team in the country. You have a top 10 offense and defense. In the third and tempo. Top six offense and defense. Third and tempo. It, it, you're going to be number one any day of the week. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, Gonzaga, I would think, is probably the favorite. Yeah, and according to the net rankings, which is also supposedly what the NCAA selection committee bases their selections on. Yeah, supposedly. Supposedly, but it's just weird because they had Purdue as like the seventh overall seed in the last top 16 drop, and now Purdue's ranked 13th in the net. So who really knows what that really is? They have Gonzaga, Arizona, Baylor, and Kentucky as their top four, which the, it obviously is not going to correlate exactly one through four in the seeds because – they have to go by regions, and you can't have Gonzaga and Arizona as both ones in the same region because they're both in the West Coast. So right. I don't know how they're going to work that out. They might put Arizona in the South. No, because Baylor is going to be one. They're in the South. Yeah. Kentucky's going to have to be in the East. Then that'll be interesting to see where they. They have to put Arizona in like the Midwest. Yeah. And then you got Houston, which I really don't know about Houston. Like they're one and four in quadrant one, which is just weird to me because they play in the American Conference, so they really don't play anybody like that. 
and then you got Villanova, Kansas. You got all these bigger, bigger schools like in, in the Power Five, like your SEC, ACC, Pac-12, Big Ten. Pac-12 is actually not bad. Pac-12's got the UCLA. They've got Arizona up here. Yeah. They, they're a little bit more respectable. Recently in college basketball, the Pac-12 has been a joke. It's not been it's not been a conference to look out for. That's for sure. Yeah. So yeah, there's no Big Ten team in the top ten. Even. The net rankings confuse me a little bit because have, I, Purdue is the, is the top overall team in the net for the Big Ten, and yeah, there's yeah. then they start to pile up after that. It goes Big Ten, Big Ten, and then you go down a little more Big Ten, Big Ten. Yeah. So it North Texas is forty third in the oh, net. Boy, Indiana not, is forty four. North Yikes. Green Green's a better team than the Hoosiers. Uh-huh. So anyway, um, what about a little recap on that IU Purdue game? We can't go without talking about the yeah the uh, showdown in Mackey. Arena. Purdue won this game by two, and Purdue had the scratch and claw for this victory at home. Yeah, that's what happens when you play the best team. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Purdue did not really have like a significant number one score. It was Eric Hunter kind of saved the day, and IU actually had multiple chances to take big shots oh, and gosh. take I, big. Yeah. Parker Stewart had a wide open three with 15 seconds left and bricked it. Another cop and primal. Yeah, the, the he, primal. He Toby and I have a little inside joke with some TikTok. Some of you might know. Yes, liver um, king. The liver king. Um, liver king mill. Yeah, Toby and I, I'm a big Purdue fan. He's a big IU fan. We split this year. Um, I, I think I actually deserve to win both. And I think IU basketball is better this year for the first time in ever. No. <laughs> uh, Purdue is simply not playing good right now. Both the times that Purdue and IU has played, it's been – lazy offense and even worse defense. So that's what I'm really worried about for Purdue. And if as for Indiana, they're going to have to win the Big Ten tournament or win at least two games to get in the bubble. I think, well, I just saw apparently IU is the first team out, which I thought they were well more out than that. But if that is the case, they beat Michigan on Thursday at 1130. And then they beat, or at least compete with, well, probably beat. They, they've got to beat Michigan, and then I think they've got to beat Illinois. So... Have fun doing that back to back days, but at least beat Michigan, put up a fight against Illinois, and then I think there's a, a, more of a conversation. Personally, I don't think IU is going to make it, but you never know. Sometimes it's sometimes the committee wants a big team like IU in. It's uh, it's, it's a bubble I don't know. story. I don't like know. you got it's I use a blue bro, a blue blood program. Sorry, a blue blood. Gosh, I can't say it. A blue blood program. And I don't know. I mean, like, they, they didn't go 500 in the Big Ten. They were, what, one game under, two games under? Two games under, and we have two good wins, Purdue and Ohio State. Those were both early. Yeah, IU kind of had a little bit of a yeah. fall off in the end, but they had a, a few of their guys out for one game. They got suspended from their yeah. one game. I which mean, you, you lose to Northwestern because of something like that. That's – that that's honestly kind of – kinda, that's gonna that may you. put them out of the tournament. Exactly, yeah. You lose on the – I don't care where you're playing, Northwestern, if you lose to Northwestern. Yeah. right now no offense to northwestern but let's be honest a team like iu losing to northwestern right now that's the kind of stuff that would keep you out of the tournament yeah so uh who who's your favorite to win this uh big 10 tournament the big 10 tournament well here's the thing if the purdue boilermakers play good defense they're gonna win the big 10 tournament. easily now are they no they're not gonna play good defense because they're mm-hmm. awful at defense right now yeah uh, i think uh well let's get the bracket pulled. iu okay. plays iu plays michigan See, I think IU could win that game. Now, here's the thing. They could. Michigan is very tough in the Big Ten tournament every year. And I, if this were a regular season game, I think IU would, would pull it out, honestly. But Michigan's just so tough in the Big Ten tournament. And yeah, they, uh, I, I just, IU's coming off two straight losses. Yeah, I mean, and then even if, even if IU were to win, they have to play with Illinois the very next day, and yeah. Illinois would be on full rest. Exactly, full rest. They've and let's talk about Rutgers squeaking games. in the double bye. Rutgers is playing on Friday. That's just they put crazy. they pushed Iowa back down to a five. They did. So now you got Illinois and Rutgers and Purdue and Wisconsin are the double bye teams. Yeah. Out of those four teams, I can honestly see, like, Rutgers winning the Big Ten. I honestly could. Low-key, they're a dangerous team. I would not want to play them on that Iowa's Friday. Iowa's hot. I was hot too, so I mean, I would Iowa guess by Rutgers. the way Nebraska's playing that Nebraska's going to be playing Iowa on Thursday, and then Iowa, I would pick Iowa. That's a rivalry, so it's going to be Iowa Nebraska on Thursday, assuming Nebraska beats Northwestern. So then you got Iowa Rutgers on Friday. That's going to be a good game, and I could see Iowa winning that game actually with their three point shooting and uh, Jordan Bohannon and all those guys. 
I think Iowa could beat Rutgers. Or if Rutgers wins, then they're either going to be playing Michigan, IU, or Illinois. That'd be Saturday for the semifinal. So I don't know. I think Rutgers is dangerous, but I, I could see Iowa winning against Nebraska and then Rutgers. And on the bottom half of the bracket, I, I just – if Purdue can play it's good weird. enough defense, I think they can beat Wisconsin. In both Purdue-Wisconsin games, it's been, like, weird. Like, Purdue think, has had no offense, and then Johnny Davis or Brad Davis just takes over a game. Honestly, I think if it comes down to Purdue-Wisconsin, which I think it will. If Purdue just plays solid defense, they will win this tournament. I period. think Purdue's going to win that Wisconsin game. I, I'd be shocked if they lose to a team three times. I don't, I don't think they could beat Illinois for a third time, though. I Yeah, I'd, that'd be the final, wouldn't it? Or, or Rutgers, Iowa, potentially Michigan, potentially Indiana. There's a million possibilities here, so it'll be fun to see how it unfolds. I don't think any of the first four teams, Nebraska, Northwestern, Minnesota, Penn State, make it past this. Thursday. Bit. Yeah, I don't think they make it past Thursday. No. Although Nebraska somehow is beating the best teams in the conference. They yeah. beat – Three in a row. They Three beat Wisconsin. Who else did they beat? Uh, they beat Penn – they creamed Penn State is what I heard, and then they beat Ohio State on the road. And then they beat Wisconsin, Wisconsin on the road. On the road. On Johnny Davis did get hurt. Night. Brad Davin's t- ba- ba. Brad Davin's Brad Davin's like 36. 36th senior night. <laughs> you get spoiled. All right, so give me give me your little prediction. Who's going to be the Big Ten championship? Uh, the Big Ten championship will be the Purdue Boilermakers and mm, oof. I'm, I'm going to say Illinois. Illinois yeah. will come out of the top half. Purdue or Wisconsin. We'll go with Purdue. And I think Illinois will win that game. I yeah, think I, I, I think it's going to be hard for Purdue to beat a team – Three times. Mm-hmm. I agree. So my my Big Ten prediction is the Illinois Fighting Illini. How about yours? As a Purdue fan, I want to be a homer and I want to be a I want to be a little uh, one sided here, but I honestly think Purdue can get beat by Ohio State on Friday. Yeah, I think they could too. I, I think Purdue will win. It's exactly game. what happened last year. But in this exact they, same building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> assuming that they play Ohio State, which I think they will. Um, I, I think Purdue will win that game, but wouldn't be surprised if they did. I'll, I'll take the Boilers, though. I'll be bold, and I'll take my Boilers. All right, so that puts you to Saturday. Who's your picks to win Saturday? Uh, bottom, bottom I'll take – okay, so it's Wisconsin and Purdue. Yeah, likely. Um, That'd be the favorite. Or Michigan State could potentially beat Wisconsin. I, think I haven't – yeah. I, I don't – I can't vividly remember the results of those two games, of their two matchups Let's earlier this year. Real quick. Um. We'll see the second round games between Michigan and Indiana and then Maryland and, and Michigan State are just weird for me. They split them, so they, they split them. Home team. I ro- honestly could road see. Team, road team won each of the Michigian State Wisconsin. That's games. odd. Yeah. Um, but Wisconsin is definitely the more balanced team right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that if I'm going to make an upset bid, though, I'll take the Iowa Hawkeyes to beat to win the top. They're see, one of the I, hot teams right now. I can see if Jordan Bohannon, you get him going in the tournament. Keegan Murray, we're forgetting about Keegan Murray. You pair those two guys together, and Iowa's dangerous. Yeah. Well, um, and then I don't know. I if I had to make a like a real upset bid to win this whole thing, I'm taking the five seeded Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah. They're the hottest team, or maybe even Michigan State. Tom Mizzo, who knows? He's just a tournament coach. I'm taking the nine seed Indiana Hoosiers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to roll with the Boilers to win this all, and you got the got, fighting Illini. All, all right, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes uh, this weekend. So we'll post this, I believe, on Wednesday. Yes. Um, thank you guys so much for um, t- uh, tuning in to this episode of the Roar Podcast Sports Edition. Toby and I had a lot of fun talking about the Big Ten, talking about a lot of weird statistics that we thought were interesting. And um, That's right. Thank you guys so much, and we'll catch you next time. Go Hoosiers.